morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we just concluded the uh, part two of the uh, Philippine uh, Constitution, the discussion of the Philippine Constitution. And now we will be uh, going to part three. So the scope of uh, the part three discussion is um, only the legislative branch of the government. Only one topic, but uh, the discussion of which is very complicated. So to start with, the legislative branch of the government is uh, consisted of two chambers. We have the uh, Senate and we have the uh, House of Representatives. So it is known as bicameralism. Bi, which means two. So there are several advantages of two chambers than only one chamber. But of course, we cannot deny the fact that the disadvantage of uh, two chamber legislative branch is with respect with respect to expenses because we will be uh, giving the uh, salary and uh, pork barrel of the um, two chambers as compared to only one chamber so the two chamber legislative branch of the government was uh, introduced by the Americans when they invaded us. So during the time of uh, Americans, we have the uh, Philippine Commission and the uh, Philippine Assembly. And uh, this was introduced by virtue of uh, the Jones Law. So the, the legislative power is essentially the authority under the constitution to make laws and subsequently when the need arises to uh, change the same so it is unconstitutional for a law to be passed wherein it has a provision that it cannot be repealed or it cannot be changed the following are the limitations in the exercise of the legislative power. So as I told you a while back, the Congress cannot pass an irrepealable laws because laws must be changed in the future as need arises. And uh, the Congress must also observe the principle of separation of powers in passing laws. The principle of separation of powers was um, introduced in part two. In fact, we have discussed uh, some cases like uh, the case of Blas Ople versus Ruben Torres, wherein the president cannot uh, uh, pass a pres uh, an order that will affect all the uh, inhabitants of the territory because that is the job of the legislative branch of the government. We have also uh, discussed the case of uh, Ray Joel versus Agregado, where in um, the executive branch cannot uh, decide whether the radio will be uh, purchased or not upon request of the judiciary. Okay, and um, we have also discussed the uh, case of uh, Maceda versus Vasquez, where in the ombudsman cannot dictate the uh, Supreme Court what to do or what not to do. So those cases explain the separation of powers. And uh, the Congress must not unduly delegate its legislative powers. So you may ask, can the Congress delegate its legislative power? Yes, but there are some uh, things to be considered therein for it to be valid because if they will th these things will not be considered then it will be um, it will be considered as uh, undue delegation of legislative power 
which is unconstitutional. So we will be discussing some cases later on to illustrate the phrase undue delegation of legislative power. <clears throat> Like, for example, in this case of Echegaray versus Secretary of Justice, Leo Echegaray was um, convicted, convicted of uh, the crime of rape for, uh, alleg uh, for allegedly uh, raping his uh, stepdaughter. And um, the penalty of death was um, imposed to him. Because uh, during the time that was 1998 or 1999, we have the uh, uh, death penalty that is uh, being carried out by means of uh, lethal injection. So we have um, Republic Act uh, 8177, the uh, lethal injection law. The Republic Act 8177 or the uh, lethal injection law provides that the Secretary of Justice in coordination with the Secretary of Health and Bureau of Corrections shall within 30 days from the effectivity of this law promulgate rules to implement its provisions. So yan ang nakalagay sa Republic Act 8177, the lethal injection law. And this was questioned by Leo Echegaray. Kasi sabi ng company uh, Leo Echegaray, isn't it that the rules or the laws must be executed by the legislative branch of the government? Why is it that the Secretary of Justice is empowered to make rules? So, according to the Supreme Court, the act of empowering the Secretary of Justice in conjunction with the Secretary of Health and Director of Corrections to promulgate rules on the subject of lethal injection is a form of delegation of authority to the uh, administrative bodies. So it is constitutional for the rules to be delegated to the administrative bodies like the uh, Secretary of Justice in this case. So we have also the case Sikat na kaso ito in the criminology parlance. This is the people of the Philippines versus Judge Jose Vera. So what happened in this case is um, way back 1930s, we have an adult probation law and that is uh, known as um, Act 4221. So Act 4221 uh, I repeat, uh, Act 4221 is the uh, adult probation law way back 1930s. So it provides that this law shall apply only to, to provinces in which the respective provincial boards have provided salary for probation officer at rates not lower than, uh, basta may, ang essence ng batas na ito ay, under the probation law, Pwedeng, pawala, pa, uh, pwedeng uh, palayain ang isang convict. But there must be, uh, it, they must be supervised by the probation officers. But under this law, Act 4221, there is probation in a province if the province set aside a portion of its uh, budget for the salary of probation officers. So it happens that if uh, a province has no fund for the salary of probation officers, then there is no probation in that province. But if it, if it has a fund, then there is probation. The uh, person involved in this case has a name of Mariano Kuinjing. He was uh, charged and convicted with a crime Afterwards, he applied for probation. Unluckily for him, sabi ng, uh, sabi ng court, 
hindi ka pwedeng bigyan ng probation kasi walang probation sa ating province. In other words, hindi nag-set aside ang ating provincial government ng salary ng ating probation officer. So we do not have probation officers. So it follows, we do not have probation. So according to Mariano Ku and Jing, the Act for 221 violates the equal protection of laws. At the same time, it constitutes undue delegation of legislative power. So the question is, is Mariano Kuenjing correct? According to the Supreme Court, yes. So a law delegating to the local government units the power to fund the salary of probation officer in their respective area is unconstitutional for it violates the equal protection of laws. At the same time, it constitutes undue delegation of legislative power. So let's go to the Senate. We will be discussing the two chambers one by one. So the Senate is composed of 24 senators. But every election, we are electing 12. Why? Because under uh, the um, uh, 1987 Constitution, it expressly provides that when during the next election, and that is uh, uh, 1992 election, 24 senators will be elected to complete the 24 members of the Senate. But the first 12 will be given a uh, term of six years, and the number 13 to 24 will be given a term of three years. So because of that, alternate that we are electing 12 senators for election. So these are the qualifications of a person to run as senator. So first, he must be a natural born citizen of the Philippines. We have discussed in the citizenship that there are two classifications of citizens. We have the natural born and we have the naturalized citizen. The natural born are those who having not to perform an act in order to complete Philippine citizenship. And it also includes those who are born before January 17, 1973 of Filipino mothers who elect Philippine citizenship upon reaching the age of majority. The naturalized, on the other hand, are those who are former foreigners. They came here in the Philippines and underwent the naturalization process. So next is, he must be at least 35 years of age on the day of election. He can read and write. So there is no educational qualification of a person to become senator. Uh, as long as he, know, uh, he knows how to read and write. He is a registered voter and a resident of the Philippines for not less than two years immediately preceding the day of election. Is there a need for a senator to be actually residing here in the Philippines for the last two years before the election? To tell you no, because if you remember, we have a case, uh, the Romualdas case, wherein the Supreme Court said that uh, as long as a person has the intent to return, then he is deemed to be still in the Philippines. So comes now the case of Pimentel versus Kamele. What happened in this case? Section 36 of Republic Act 9165, the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002, provides that all candidates for public office, whether appointed or elected, both in the uh, national or local government, shall undergo the mandatory drug test. Lahat ng elective and appointed officials shall undergo drug test. Yan ang nakalagay sa Section uh, 36 of Republic Act 9165. Kuinestyon ito ni, ni Pimentel. 
According to Pimentel, the Constitution already provides for the qualification of a person to run as senator. Bakit pa dadagdagan ng qualification to undergo the mandatory drug test? So that, or this Section 36 of um, the Republic Act 9165 must be considered unconstitutional. O ano ang sabi ng Supreme Court? Tama ka, Pimentel. Hindi pwedeng dagdagan ng Congress natin itong qualification ng uh, senator as stated under the Constitution. So only one thing is certain. If you did not finish your college, as long as you know how to read and write, tapos adik ka, takbo ka na lang na senator. No? Huwag ka nang mag-apply na janitor. Huwag kang mag-apply na security guard because you will be disqualified. But you are fully qualified to run as senator. Okay? That is a provision of Pimentel versus Tabelite. What is a term of office of a senator? So the term of office of senator is three, uh, it's six years, right? It is six years. Uh, the only exemption, the only exemption is those who are elected way back 1992, who landed as 13th to 24th place, wherein their term of office is only three years. And no senator shall serve for more than two consecutive terms. Ibig sabihin, hindi pwedeng mag-serve na senator ng isang taho ng, dala, ng higit sa dalawang magkasunod na termino. What if a senator <clears throat> voluntarily renounced his office or voluntarily resigned kasi may plano siya natatakbo sa susunod? Okay, let me illustrate it. Paano kung si Senator A nanalo siyang senator way back uh, 2016 election? So matatapos ang kanyang term of office ng uh, 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 2022. Nanalo na naman siya noong 2022. So dapat matatapos na matatapos ang kanyang second term ng 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So by 2028, gusto na naman niyang tumakbong senator. Kaya ang ginawa niya noong 2025, nag-resign siya. Okay? Nag-resign siya so that tatakbo siya. Uh, ang plano niya ay tatakbo na naman by 2028. Pwede ba yon? Hindi pwede yun. No? Kasi napakalinaw sa ating saligang batas na voluntary renunciation of office for any length of time shall not be considered as an interruption in the continuity of his service for the full term with which he was elected. Kaya ang ibig sabihin nito, kung nag-resign siya, sa kanyang office, hindi na nga mahulugan na naputol ang kanyang term doon at qualify na siyang tatakbo sa susunod. No? So, let's go to House of Representatives. So, the House of Representatives is composed of not more than 250 members. Kaya ang Senators, 24, but ang House of Represent Representatives is not more than uh, is more than 250 members. So, uh, we all know that <clears throat> there are two kinds of representatives. We have the district representatives and we have the uh, party list representatives. So, like for example, in, the, in this province of Tarlac, pwede bang mag-create na we have three representatives, okay? We have District 1, 2, and 3. Can we create another uh, district intended to favor a specific person to tell you, no, that is prohibited, and that is known as gerrymandering. Also, gerrymandering is prohibited. As I told you, there are two classifications of representatives. We have the district representatives, like for example, in this province of Tarlac, we have three district representatives because we have three legislative districts. And we have also the 
party list representatives. So, what are the qualifications of district representatives? So, as usual, must be a natural born citizen of the Philippines. Uh, in fact, when we have discussed uh, citizenship, we uh, explained the case entitled ben Benson versus Cruz. Okay, wherein paano kung ang isang natural born Filipino citizen pumunta sa ibang bansa, naging member ng armed forces ng bansa na yon, tapos bumalik siya dito sa Pilipinas. So qualified ba siyang tumakbong uh, congressman? To tell you, yes. Kasi binalikan lang niya ang kanyang pagka-natural born citizen. At ang tawag natin doon ay repatriation. So, with respect to age, at least 25 years of age on the day of election, also uh, able to read and write, and a registered voter in the district in which he is to be elected, and a resident thereof for not less than one year immediately preceding the day of election. Let's go to the case of uh, Danilo versus Fernandez. This happened at Laguna. Uh, Danilo Ramon Fernandez <clears throat> has no real property in Santa, in Santa Rosa, Laguna. Ibig sabihin, wala siyang bahay doon. Nangungupahan lang siya doon. Nangungupahan siya doon, but ang kanyang anak, pinag-enroll na niya sa school sa Laguna. Tumakbo na siya ngayong Congress, congressman ng Santa Rosa. So, may nag-question sa kanyang qualification. According to uh, the person who had uh, questioned his qualification, ay hindi ka pwedeng tumakbong congressman dito sa Laguna kasi nangungupahan ka lang dito sa Laguna. You have no real property here. So, is he qualified? or not qualified. According to the Supreme Court, he is qualified. Okay? He is qualified. The Constitution does not require property ownership in the place where the candidate is residing as long as he complied with the residency requirement. And that is one year immediately preceding the day of election. But there is uh, another case. Okay? There is another case with respect to uh, Aquino versus Kamilek. Magkaiba naman ang sitwasyon ni Aquino at uh, <clears throat> uh, Aquino at Fernandez. Si uh, Aquino <clears throat> uh, Aquino is from uh, Concepcion, Tarlac. He stayed. May bahay siya doon sa Concepcion. So, in almost Whole duration ng kanyang buhay, dyan siya sa, sa conception. So immediately, he, he filed a certificate of candidacy to run as congressman in the second district of Makati in the 1995 uh, election. So inindicate niya na ang kanyang, resident ay, ang kanyang residence ay sa uh, uh, conception, pero may condominium siya sa Makati. Okay, so qualified ba siyang tumakbo na congressman ng Makati? Of course, no. Okay, so according to the uh, uh, Supreme Court, to lease a property in one place does not automatically indicate that a person is abandoning his previous domicile. Ang kanyang business, ang kanyang domicile sa Concepcion, Tarlac. No? So he cannot be qualified to run as a uh, congressman of Makati. So, let's go to party list representative. Ano-ano naman ang kanilang qualification? So, still, must be natural born citizen, a registered voter, and resident in the Philippines uh, within one year immediately preceding the day of election, is still able to read and write, and um, at least uh, 25 years of age and a bona fide member of the party or organization that he is going to represent. 
for at least 90 days preceding the day of election. Let's go to the case of Angladlad versus Kamilek. The Angladlad party list represents yung mga lesbians, yung mga tibo at bakla. So, uh, the Kamilek initially decided not to register this party list, Angladlad. So, one of the issues that were used against the uh, that was used against Angladlad party list is uh, immorality. <laughs> okay, immorality. Because yun nga, ang mga members ay uh, mga bakla at tibo. So according to the uh, Supreme Court, the Kamelec cannot disqualify the Angladlad party list. So napakadaming reason ang nakalagay doon. So one is, there is no law which criminalizes homosexual behavior. Hindi naman krimen ang pagiging bakla at pagiging tibo. So it is not a crime and it is not an immoral situation. So, uh, ang isa pa na ginamit ng, uh, o sinabi ng Supreme Court ay denial of the right to be qualified will violate equal protection clause of the Constitution. Kasi ang batas natin ay dapat na pantay-pantay. Kung sakaling hindi qualify yung uh, ang ladlad party list, then we are denying them of the equal protection clause. So what is a term of office of the members of House of Representatives? So the term of office of the members of the House of Representatives is three years. Okay, and no member of the House of Representatives shall serve for more than three consecutive terms. Kaya ang ginagawa ng iba dyan, pag nakompleto nila ang three consecutive terms, pupunta sila sa ibang position, okay? to run as mayor, to run as governor, after uh, <clears throat> one term is babalik na naman sila sa Congress. No? So as usual, like in the case of senator, if a person uh, voluntarily resigns as uh, a congressman, it does not mean na naputol ang kanyang, serve, ang kanyang service sa term na yon. Kaya paano kung si Congressman A ay nanalo na, uh, nanalo na Congressman noong 2013? Pwede ba siyang tumakbo ng 2016? Pwede. Pwede ba siyang uh, tumakbo ng uh, 2019? Uh, pwede na naman. No? Pwede ba siyang tatakbo ng 2022 for the same position? Hindi na pwede. No? Paano kung noong 2020 ay nag-resign siya? Kasi may plano siyang tatapo ng 2022. Pwede ba yon? It cannot be. No? Kung nag-resign siya, nag-resign lang siya. But it does not mean that uh, mapuputol ang kanyang term of office to qualify him in the 2022 election to run in the same position. Let's go to the case. Uh, let's go to uh, applications of the parliamentary immunity. Ang ibig sabihin ng parliamentary immunity ay privilege ito ng members ng parliament. Okay? Uh, privilege ito ng members of parliament. Ang parliament, ay, I'm talking about the Congress. No? Uh, it only happened that uh, in other uh, countries, they are calling it as a parliament, but sa atin is we are calling it as a Congress. So the members of the Congress have privileges. And these are known as immunities. So, first of the immunities or privileges is hindi sila pwedeng huli in while the Congress is in session. Maliban, if they commit a crime that is punishable by more than six years imprisonment. So, next is a senator or member of the House of Representatives <coughs> shall not be questioned nor be held liable in relation to his speech that is known as privileged speech. 
hindi pwedeng maging liable ang isang congressman o senator sa kanyang nasabi sa kanyang privilege speech. So, let's go to two cases to explain this. We have the people of the Philippines versus Romeo Halostos and we have Defensor Santiago. Unahin natin si, si Halostos. Romeo Halostos was a member of the House of Representatives representing the first district of Sambuanga del Norte. Uh, he was, however, confined, nakakulong siya sa Bilibid Prison dahil na conviction ng two counts of uh, two counts of rape and six counts of acts of lasciviousness. Ang nakakatawa dito, nakakulong siya sa Bilibid Prison nung tumakbo siyang congressman, nanalo Nanalo siyang congressman. So, of course, we cannot deny that he cannot fully accomplish his task as a congressman kasi nakakulong siya. Nag-complain na ngayon ng taga Sambuanga. Sabi ng taga Sambuanga, pwedeng palayain ninyo ang congressman namin so that we will be freely and we will be intelligently represented in Congress. So, sabi ng Supreme Court, so sorry for the term, ah. may pagkatanga ang voters ng uh, Sambuanga kasi alam na nga nila na nakakulong. Siya pa ang binoto. So if a representative cannot fully perform his duties, it is also the fault of the voters he is representing because they still voted for him notwithstanding na alam nila na siya ay nakakulong at siya ay convicted rapist. So, let's go to the case of Pobre versus Miriam Defensor Santiago. We all know that Miriam Defensor Santiago is napaka uh, very, very vocal that she is uh, uh, she, she just say what he wants to say, especially in privileged speech. In one of his privilege speech, uh, one of his privilege speeches, ito ang kanyang sinabi. Sabi niya, I am not angry. I am irate. I am foaming in the mouth. I am homicidal. I am suicidal. I am humiliated, debased, degraded, etc. Tapos sabi niya, I spit on the face of the Chief Justice Artemio Panganiban and his cohorts in the Supreme Court. So, sinabi niya na ang Supreme Court daw ay surrounded by idiots. So, napakadami siyang sinabi doon. Okay? But, ang matinding sinabi niya ay yun nga, he is going to, she is going to spit in the face of uh, the Chief Justice at ang Supreme Court daw natin ay sub, uh, Supreme Court ng idiots. Walang alam. So, there were some persons na gusto nilang kasuhan si Miriam Defensor Santiago dahil sa kanyang sinabi. But Miriam Defensor Santiago is covered or protected by the parliamentary immunity. So she is not liable for the contents of her speech. According to the Supreme Court, however, the lady senator undoubtedly crossed the limits of decency and good professional conduct. Hindi siya naging professional sa kanyang speech. So let's go to the prohibitions in the position of senator. Uh, to tell you, ang prohibition sa senator na ito, prohibitions din sa how members of the House of Representatives. They have the same prohibitions. No? They have the same prohibitions. Ibig sabihin, bawal nilang gawin ang mga ito. First, incompatible office. Ang senator at members ng House of Representatives ay hindi sila dapat uh, maluklok sa position sa government during their term as such. Kung sakaling, katulad ni uh, DPWH uh, Secretary uh, Villar, nanalo siya, na, nanalo siya na congressman. Okay? Tapos inappoint ni uh, President Duterte as a DPWH. 
Kaya pwede ba siyang maging congressman and BPWH secretary at the same time? Hindi pwede yun. Okay? Hindi pwede yun. Kaya, kaya, kaya ang ginawa ni Villar is nag-resign siya as a congressman for him to be appointed ay for him to serve as a secretary of DPWH. Next is forbidden office. Pinagbabawal na office. Kaya ang senator o congressman, hindi sila pwedeng gagaw ng batas na mag-create ng office sa government tapos sila ang ma-appoint doon. Okay? So that is known as forbidden office. Appearance as counsel. Ang isang senator o congressman, kung abogado siya, hindi siya pwedeng mag-represent ng uh, kaso sa judicial or quasi-judicial or other administrative bodies. So, pwede ba siyang magbigay ng advice? Pwede. Okay? Pwede ba siyang gumawa ng papers? Uh, As a lawyer, pwede. Pero hindi siya pwedeng mag-represent ng kaso sa judicial, quasi-judicial, or administrative bodies. Financial interest, of course, it is self-explanatory. Hindi pwedeng magkaroon ng financial interest ang senator o congressman sa mga ibang agencies ng government. And intervention, hindi pwedeng makialam si senator at members ng uh, House of Representatives sa ibang offices. So let's go to the cases. Like for example is Liban versus Gordon. Richard Gordon <clears throat> is the former uh, uh, administrator or head of SBMA, the Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority. At the same time, siya ang chairman ng Philippine National Red Cross. In 2004, tumakbo siyang senator, nanalo. So ang issue dito ay, pwede ba siyang maging senator at the same time ay chair chairman ng Philippine National Red Cross at the same time? Sabi ng Supreme Court, pwede. Pwede because ang, Fili ang Philippine National Red Cross ay hindi siya owned by the government. It is, uh, it is a private entity. Kaya pwede bang ang senator ay maging senator and uncorman at the same time? Pwede because kung uncorman sila sa like for example ABS-CBN or GMA, ABS-CBN or GMA is not government. So, let's go to Puyat versus De Guzman. Ito ay uh, panto, uh, anong tawag dito? Uh, may pagka-complicated ang kaso na ito. May isang uh, <clears throat> uh, may isang members ng Batasang Pambansa or Philippine Congress na nag-represent. Abogado siya. Okay? Abogado ang taong ito. He uh, represented a corporation sa isang kaso. Sabi ng kalaban niya, Uy, hindi pwede, hindi pwede yan kasi totoo na abogado ka pero member ka ng Congress. Kaya hindi ka pwedeng mag-represent. Okay? Hindi mo pwedeng i-represent ang company na yan sa kaso sa judicial, quasi-judicial, or administrative bodies. Sabi ng member ng Congress na yan, okay, naintindihan ko naman. Malinaw ang ating saligang batas na hindi pwede. After a few days, siya na naman ang nagrepresent sa corporation na yon. Tapos sabi niya, abogado ako ng corporation na ito kahit na ako member ako ng Congress. Kasi uh, I have already shares. Part owner na ako ng corporation na ito. Kaya kailangan na i-represent ko na siya. Okay, kaya ang issue ay, pwede bang payagan ang abogado at member ng Congress at the same time? Who is also a part owner ng corporation na yan, na i-represent ang corporation na yan? Sabi ng Supreme Court, no way. 
Okay? So, kahit na kung stockholder siya, kahit na kung part owner siya ng corporation na yan, hindi, niya, hindi siya pwedeng mag-appear na abogado ng corporation na yan. So, let's go to the different sessions being conducted in Congress. So, we have the regular sessions. So, uh, tatlo kung hindi ako nagkakamali, tatlo, uh, tatlo itong sessions. Eh. We have the regular, we have the special, and we have the joint sessions in Congress. So, regular is the, well, uh, the one being done every year on the fourth uh, Monday of July. Kaya na nga, di ba, every fourth Monday of uh, July na mag-start ang regular session, nandyan ang sona ng ating president, the State of the Nation Address. So, uh, that's it, like what I have told you a while back, before the uh, start of the uh, regular session, ay magkakaroon ng sona ang ating president. We have the special session that may be called by the president anytime. We have the joint session wherein the Senate and the House of Representatives will be uh, will be combined. Okay, so it is known as joint session. So what are the uh, instances wherein the joint session uh, may be called, wherein the two chambers of our Congress, the Senate and House of Representatives, will sit together and they will be working together. Okay, so first is... Uh, the act of choosing the president. You may ask, bakit act of choosing the president? Eh, di ba ang president natin? We are electing it at large. Okay? So by 2022, we will be having another, uh, uh, we, will be an, we will be having an election for president. Uh, hindi yan ang tinutukoy ko dito. Uh, we will be discussing later on that there may be a vacancy in the position of the president. So if the president will die or resign, then the vice president will become the president. So what if the president or the, and the vice president resigns, dies, or removed from office? In that case, then the Senate president will be acting as a president uh, pending the uh, schedule of a special election. What if the Senate President, Vice President, and President na isang nasa iisang tricycle sila, okay? Binangga yung tricycle na yon, patay yung tatlo na yon. Okay? In that case, then the House uh, is, is Speaker will be acting as a President and a, an election will be scheduled for uh, uh, for us to elect our president paano kung yung apat na yon yung house speaker senate president president uh, and vice president na isang ay nasa isang tricycle no binangga yung tricycle patay yung apat na yon in that case the uh, one who will be acting as president will be determined by congress at ito na ang tinutukoy natin ngayon no we're in uh, the House of Representatives and Senate will be sitting together to choose who will become the president. Let's go to the different officers of the Senate. We have the Senate president. We have the Senate president pro tempore. We have the majority leader and minority leader. So this is with respect to Senate. With respect to the House of Representatives, it is headed by the House Speaker. We have four deputy speakers, two for Luzon and one for Visayas and one for Mindanao. We have the Secretary General. We have the Sergeant at Arms. We have the majority leader elected by the ruling party and the minority leader elected by the minority party. So, let's go to the case of Avelino versus Cuenco. Ang nangyari sa kaso na ito, 
almost exactly the same nang nangyari, nang nangyari sa uh, kaso ngayon ng House of Representatives where in nag-agawan ng candy ang dalawa, di ba? Si uh, Velasco at si Cayetano. Oh, nag yan nga, sabi ng iba, eh, nag-agawan daw sila ng candy. Ganyan din, almost ganyan ang nangyari din sa Senate President way back 1940s. So, ang issue dito ay pwede bang makialam ang court at sasabihin ng court na, ay, ito, ito, Senate, ito ang president ninyo. Ang Senate President ninyo, pwede bang sabihin ng court yun? So, according to the Supreme Court, the court has no jurisdiction to determine the proper person to be the Senate President. This is because of the separation of powers, no? And also because the Senate has a full liberty or the House of Representatives has a full liberty to choose who will be their Senate President and House Speaker. Katulad nga nang nangyari last week, ba? sa kaso ni Cayetano and Velasco, wherein who will be the next Speaker, bahala na sila mag-usap doon. And the court cannot intervene. Pero magkaiba naman ang nangyari sa kaso ni Santiago versus Wingona. This was what happened. In uh, 1998, nung uh, na-organize ang Senate, kailangan nilang mag-elect kung sino ang kanilang Senate President. At dalawa ang tumakbong Senate President. Si Marcelo Fernan at si Francisco Tatad. So, ang naging butuhan doon ay 20 bumoto in favor of Fernan. Kaya siya na ngayon ang Senate President. Dalawa lang ang bumoto kay Francisco Tatad. Si Francisco Tatad mismo at si Miriam Defensor Santiago. Ibig sabihin sila lang magkakampi doon. So, under the rules ng House of Representatives, kung uh, sino yung mga senators na bumoto sa nanalong uh, Senate President, sila na ngayon ang majority. At yung bumoto naman sa natalo na Senate President, sila ang minority. Kaya automatic, yung 20 na bumoto in favor of Fernan, sila na majority. At si Francisco Tatad at uh, uh, si Miriam Defensor Santiago, sila lang na dalawa ang minority. Ang nangyari doon, biglang sumingi si Gwingona. Sabi ni Senator Gwingona, uh, we are six senators and we will be composing the minority. Paano naging ganon? <laughs> Di ba? So pwede bang, pwede bang makialam ang court at sasabihin ng, oops, take lang, take lang. Kailangan na sundin ninyo ang batas ninyo. Kaya Gwingona, huwag mo nang ituloy yung sinasabi mong minority na yan. Kasi ang totoong minority ay sina uh, Francisco Tatan at uh, Defensor lang. No? So pwede bang sabihin ng court yun? Yes. Because the court is only dictating the Senate to do what is in accordance with their rules. Rules, batas nila yan. Eh. Okay? Batas nila yan. So, kaya dapat nasundin nila yon. So that is in the case of Santiago versus Wingona. What are the matters to be considered in the meetings of Congress? So, first, a majority of each house shall constitute a quorum to do business. Alam nyo, itong quorum na ito, there are several, uh, uh, there are several ways how to uh, define it. No? Quorum generally constitutes majority. When can we say that there is majority? There is majority if there is a presence of at least one half plus one. No? Next is, the smaller number may adjourn from day to day and may compare the attendance of absent members. Kaya, uh, there must be some ways and means to be... Uh, uh, there must be some ways and means kung paano pilitin ang mga senators 
at congressman na mag-attend ng kanilang session. So, the absent members may be punished, kaya yung Senate and House of Representatives pwede lang i-punish ang palaging absent na members. And uh, each house may punish their own members. Kaya uh, pwede bang i-punish ng Senate ang, ang uh, congressman? Hindi pwede. It, the Congre this, uh, it is uh, the House of Representatives, sila ang may authority na mag-punish ng kanilang members. Ganyan din sa Senate. So with concurrence of two-thirds of all members, pwede silang, pwede, uh, by a vote of at least two-thirds ng members ng Senate or the uh, House of Representatives, pwede silang mag-suspend or pwede silang mag-expel ng member. So the votes needed is at least two-thirds. And uh, six is a penalty of suspension when imposed shall not exceed 60 days. So these are the punishment that may be imposed by Senate and House of Representatives to their member. Repriman, pagagalitan nila. Fine, it will be paying a certain amount of money for feature of salary, imprisonment, suspension, but not exceeding 60 days, and even expulsion by a vote of at least two thirds. Let's go to the case of uh, uh, Osmeña versus Pendatum. Ang, nangy ang nangyari dito sa uh, Os uh, Osmeña case is uh, we have a member of the <clears throat> we have a member of uh, the Congress by the name of uh, uh, Congressman Sergio Osmeña of Cebu. The um, president during that time is uh, was President Garcia. So in his privilege speech, napaka negative masyado ang sinasabi ni uh, Congressman Osmeña sa ating president. Sabi niya, binebenta daw niya ang pardon, mas humirap daw ang buhay ng mga Pilipino. Basta napaka dami siyang sinabi sa kanyang privilege speech na bahala na tuloy ang House of Representatives. Sabi ng House of Representatives, sus, mukhang magkakaproblema tayo dahil kay Congressman Osmeña na ito. Kaya, sabi ng House of... Uh, uh, rep, sabi ng uh, House of uh, Representatives, Osmeña, pwedeng magpakita ka ng ebidensya na totoo ang sinabi mo during the privilege speech. Tapos hindi nagpakita ng proof si Osmeña ng patunay na totoo ang kanyang sinabi sa kanyang privilege speech. Sabi na ngayon ng, uh, sabi na ngayon ng uh, uh, ibang congressman, didisiplinahin natin ang Osmeña na to. So we will be imposing some penalties to him dahil kung ano-anong sinasabi niya sa privilege speech na hindi niya naman napatunayan. O ano ang, ano ang depensa ni Osmeña? Look at the parliamentary immunity under the Constitution. Nakalagay doon na as part of parliamentary immunity, hindi pwedeng maging liable ang isang congressman o senator sa contents ng kanyang privilege speech. Tama ba si Osmeña? According to the Supreme Court, no. Totoo na may parliamentary immunity ang members ng Congress. Pero yung Senate or House of Representatives, meron silang karapatan na disiplinahin ang kailangan nilang disiplinahin na members. Kung sa tingin nila ay kailangan nilang disiplinahin si Osmeña, then so be it. That is in accordance with their internal rules. So let's go to the case of Paredes Jr. versus Sandigan Bayan. So what happened in this case is under Republic Act 3019, the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act, nakalagay sa kanyang Section 13 na any public officer 
against whom any criminal prosecution under the valid information under this law uh, shall be suspended from office pending <clears throat> ang investigation or pending ang trial. So, si, Pare, si Paredes, siya ay governor nung siya ay nakasuhan. Nakasuhan siya ng violation of anti-graft sa, San, sa Sandigan Bayan. Ngayon, no, ay, nung, nung dinidinig ng kanyang kaso, kaso niya bilang governor, nahalal siya as congressman. Okay? So, sabi ng Sandigan Bayan, under the Republic Act 3019, the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act, kailangan na masuspend ka. Kailangan na masuspend ka sa public office. Inataon, ang, ang kanyang hawak na position ngayon ay congressman. O ano na ngayon ang sabi ni Paredes? Uy, Sandigan Bayan, hindi niyo ako pwedeng isuspend. Tignan niyo sa Constitution, ang nakalagay sa Constitution ay ang pwedeng mag-suspend sa kanyang members ay yung House of Representatives. Sila ang may authority na mag-suspend sa akin at hindi ang Sandigan Bayan. So, tama ba si Paredes? To tell you no. no? So, still, uh, ang nakalagay kasi sa uh, Anti-Graft and uh, Corrupt Practices Act ay kahit na kung sinong public officer ay masuspend. Kaya wala tayong pakialam. Ikaw ay congressman, ikaw ay mayor, ikaw ay governor, ikaw ay uh, uh, senator. Kung may kaso ka sa Sandigan Bayan, you can be suspended. So let's go to matters that must be entered in the journal. Ang journal na tinutukoy natin dito ay logbook, yung official logbook ng House of Representatives or Senate. Journal ang tawag natin doon. No? So, we have the record of the proceedings. We have the votation, yung result ng votation, kung sinong bumoto sa yes or no sa isang batas, so on and so forth. No? So, kailangan na may lagay yan sa journal. Ano ang purpose ng journal? So, to ensure publicity. Kaya kung anong pinag-usapan nila sa Senate, ilalagay sa journal na yon at pwede nating tignan kung gusto natin. So, let's go to the case of Astorga versus uh, Villegas. Ang uh, <clears throat> nagka-problema sa kaso na ito, ang naging problema sa kaso na ito ay uh, there is uh, not compatibility hindi compatible kung anong nakalagay sa actual na batas at yung nakalagay sa journal. No? Basta uh, hindi sila compatible. What happened in this case? There was a law, or there was a bill that was eventually became a law. At ang batas na yon ay yung uh, the one that is uh, providing for the uh, uh, powers and authority of the uh, vice mayor of city of Manila. So that bill eventually became a law. But yung bill na yan, napakadaming changes bago siya naging batas. Ang naging problema doon, may irregularity na involved. Kasi yung Actual na pinirmahan ng Presidente ng Pilipinas, House of uh, Representatives Speaker at yung Senate President, ay hindi yun yung pinag-usapan. Kumbaga ay nadenggoy yung uh, President, House uh, Speaker and uh, Senate uh, President in this case. Kasi ang ginawa pala ng Secretary na nag-prepare ng batas na yun, dalawang copy siya. Okay? Yung actual na, yung yung copy na pinasign ay hindi yun yung pinag-usapan. Okay? Hindi yun yung pinag-usapan. Yung totoong pinag-usapan ay tinago, no? 
So, in this case, pwede bang i-withdraw nung nalaman na na may irregularity at nalaman ng ibang batas pala yung pinapirma, ibang provisions ng batas ang pinapirma, pwede bang bawiin ang signature ng uh, Senate President, House Speaker at President? To tell you, yes, pwedeng bawin ang kanilang signature. No? So, the one that was uh, used as an evidence na iba yung pinasign ay yung nakalagay sa journal. <clears throat> Let's go to the Electoral Tribunal. We have two Electoral Tribunals in the Congress. We have the Senate Electoral Tribunal or set with respect to Senate to the Senate and we have the House of Representatives Electoral Tribunal with respect to the congressman. So ano ang function ng Electoral Tribunal na ito? The function of this Electoral Tribunal is to determine uh, to uh, to decide contest relating to the election, returns, and qualification ng kanilang respective members. Kaya, sino mag-determine sa kung, kung sinong totoong na-elect o kung totoong qualified ang, House of, uh, ang members ng House of Representatives? That is the House of Representatives Electoral Tribunal. How about sa Senate? That is the set. That is the Senate Electoral Tribunal. No? So, what is the composition of this electoral tribunal? So, the chairperson, the chairman of the electoral tribunal is a senior justice in the, uh, is a senior justice, okay? So, the senior justice of the electoral tribunal shall be its chair, chairperson. So, sino sino ang members? Three will be justices of the Supreme Court. At six, I mem I senators with respect to Senate Electoral Tribunal, and or the six may also be a congressman with respect to the House of Representatives Electoral Tribunal. So idan lahat lahat ang members ng ng uh, Electoral Tribunal. We have three plus six equals nine. We have nine members. At yung pinaka-senior sa uh, justices ng Supreme Court, siya na ngayon ang automatic na chairman. Let's go to the case of Lim, uh, Lim Kai Chong versus Kamelek. Si uh, <clears throat> Lim Kai Chong ay nanalong congressman ng uh, Negros, uh, Negros Oriental. Yun lang, question ang kanyang qualification. Kaya initially, COMELEC ang dapat na mag-decide doon sa, sa, sa kanyang qualification. It only happened that baka tinamad ang COMELEC, sabi ng COMELEC, o oh, ito na ang rules na kailangan nasundin natin. Lahat ng question, lahat ng question ang kanilang qualification, including si Lim Kai Chung na yan, I-proclaim na lang natin. Okay? I-proclaim na lang natin. So, pre-noclaim. Okay? Pre-noclaim uh, pre si uh, uh, Lim Kai Chong ng Kamelek. Ngayon na proclaim na si Lim Kai, si Congressman Lim Kai Chong. Sino na ngayon? O ano nang mangyari sa kanyang kaso, sa kanyang disqualification case? In that case, ang kanyang disqualification case ay maipapasa na ngayon sa House of Representatives Electoral Tribunal. Hindi na siya sa Kamelek. So, isa lang ang ibig sabihin nito. Bago proclamation, ang may jurisdiction ay Kamelek. Pero kung naiproclaim na siya, ang may jurisdiction na doon ay House of Representatives Electoral Tribunal. Let's go to Bundok versus Pineda. Alam niyo, medyo nakakatawa ang kaso na to. Kasi, uh, balikan natin ito. Balikan natin itong composition. 
Uh, ano ang uh, composition ng House uh, ng Electoral Tribunal with respect with respect sa House of Representatives? So it is known as House of Representatives Electoral Tribunal. Tatlo ay uh, manggagaling sa Supreme Court, justices ng Supreme Court, at ang anim ay congressman. So hindi natin maiwasan na ang kong congressman na anim na yun, may kanya-kanyang political party yan. Okay? May kanya-kanyang political party yan. Ang nangyari sa kaso na ito, Bundok versus uh, uh, Pineda, uh, this involves yung uh, may isang congressman na member ng electoral tribunal na yun. Ipagpalagay natin, nakalimutan ko kasi yun eh. Ipagpalagay natin, national, na, nationalista party yun, ipagpalagay lang natin. So, during the votation, okay, may isang kaso na nang-file sa House of Representatives Electoral Tribunal na yun, involving yung disqualification case ng isang nationalista party. Nung votation, yung congressman na member ng House of uh, Representatives Electoral Tribunal, bumoto siya laban sa kanyang kapartido. Ang inakasahan ng kanyang ng may kaso na yon na nationalist party ay nako in favor sa akin. In favor sa akin yan kasi kap, because uh, kasama ko siya sa nationalist party. But nung actual nabutuhan, nabigla yung congressman na yon kasi bumoto yung kanyang kapartido laban sa kanya. Nag-complain na ngayon yung may kaso sa House of Representatives Electoral Tribunal. Sabi niya, Nationalist Party, bakit imbes na bumoto yan in favor sa akin kasi kapartido niya ako, iba ang kanyang binoto. Binoto niya in favor sa aking kalaban. Sabi na ngayon ng Nationalist Party, tanggalin natin ang congressman na yan sa House of, Rep House of uh, Representatives Electoral Tribunal at palitan natin ng boboto in favor sa iyo. Pwede bang gawin yon? Under the case of Bondok versus Pineda, hindi pwedeng gawin yon. No? Kung na-appoint ang isang uh, congressman as member ng House of uh, Representatives Electoral Tribunal, hayaan na lang natin siya na mag-decide by his own. Hindi nangangahulugan na automatic ang kanyang boto ay in favor sa kanyang party mates. No? So, let's go to uh, Garcia et al. versus House of Representatives Electoral Tribunal. Ito naman, yung may disqualification case na sinampa laban sa isang congressman. So, inuri ko ah, may disqualification case na sinampa laban sa isang congressman. <clears throat> So, under the rules ng House of Representatives Electoral Tribunal, bago ma-entertain ang disqualification case na yon, dapat na magbayad ng 5,000 pesos na deposit sa House of Representatives Electoral Tribunal. Ang ginawa ng nag-file ng disqualification case sa isang congressman, hindi siya nagbayad ng uh, <clears throat> deposit na 5,000 pesos. Pwede ba yon? Pwede bang hindi siya na magbayad tapos magsasampa lang siya ng, uh, magsampa lang siya ng uh, disqualification case without paying the 5,000 pesos? Sabi ng Supreme Court, no. Considering the seriousness of disqualification, it is just and proper for the petitioners, yung nag-file ng disqualification case, na i-observe nila yung House of Representatives Electoral Tribunal rules and procedure. Kung nakalagay doon na kailangan na magbayad sila ng uh, deposit, kailangan na magbayad sila. Hindi nila pwedeng baliwalain yon. Or else, yung disqualification case, ay madidismiss. 
So let's go to Commission on Appointment. So the main function of the Commission on Appointment is uh, to approve or disapprove appointments submitted to it by the President. Kasi kung minsan dahil sa emotion, baka mamaya ang uh, i-appoint ni President na DILG Secretary ay yung magaling magmanicure. Okay? So baka abusuhin ng ating President ang kanyang appointing power. So because of that, nandyan ang Commission on Appointment to scrutinize yung mga presidential appointees na yun. <clears throat> Sino ang chairperson or chairman ng uh, Commission on Appointments? So the chairman is a Senate president. The Senate president is the ex officio or the automatic chairman of the Commission on Appointments. How about the members? So the members will be 12 senators and 12 members of the House of Representatives elected by each house on the basis of proportional representation from the political parties. Ibig sabihin, uh, gaano kadami ang, like for example, liberal party sa liberal party sa uh, na mag-represent sa Commission on Appointments, depende kung ilan sila kadami sa Senate or House of Representatives. Kaya kung sa Senate ay 12 ang Liberal Party, eh, 24 lahat ang mga uh, senators, ibig sabihin, kalahati sa, kalahati sa mga senators uh, na mag-represent sa Commission on Appointments ay manggagaling sa party na yon. Kaya yan ang ibig sabihin ng proportional representation. So, what is the reason of creating the Commission on Appointments? Like of what I have told you a while back, the main purpose or reason of the appointment, of the creation of the Commission on Appointments is to scrutinize the appointments in the important positions in the government. Kasi baka mamaya, may uh, super lakas kay Presidente na manicurista, tapos siya ang in na secretary ng DNR. Ganon. No? So what are these present, uh, uh, appointments that must be scrutinized by the Commission on Appointments? So we have the uh, heads of the executive departments, yung mga secretaries. We have the ambassadors. We have the officers of the armed forces from the rank of colonel or naval captain. May actual, may actual case in relation to this. Ang katumbas, noon na, noon, noon, noong wala pa yung uh, uh, bagong batas na nag-reclassify ng ranking system sa PNP. Ang katumbas ng uh, colonel sa PNP ay uh, uh, senior superintendent. Okay, senior superintendent. Itong Senior Superintendent Act, kailangan bang ma-scrutinize sa PNP? Kailangan bang ma-scrutinize ito ng Commission on Appointments bago sila ma-appoint sila ma doon or ma-promote doon? To tell you no. Because when we say officers of the armed forces, we are talking to the armed forces of the Philippines only. It does not include Yung PNP, because we all know that the PNP is civilian in character, which is separate from the armed forces. Bakang tanong nyo sa akin, eh may bagong batas ah, pinalitan ang ranking system sa uh, PNP at pinantay na siya sa AFP. Okay, pinalitan lang yung ranking system, but is still, okay, is still the PNP is civilian in character. Okay, it is not a member of the armed forces. So, uh, let's go to hearings done in the Congress. So, there are two classifications of hearings being done in Congress. We have the hearing in aid of legislation and we have the appearance of department heads. So, I repeat, uh, 
We have the uh, two hearings being conducted in Congress. We have the hearing in aid of legislation, and we have the uh, appearance of department heads. Bakit kailangan ng i-classify natin ang hearing into hearing in aid of legislation at appearance of department heads? That is because to determine kung pwedeng pilitin ang isang tao na sagutin ang tanong during the hearing. If that is a hearing in aid of legislation, kailangan nasagutin ng tao ang tanong. Kung hindi niya sasagutin, pwede siyang ipakulong ng Congress. Pero kung appearance of department heads hearing, kahit na kung hindi sagutin ang tanong, hindi siya pwedeng ipakulong. And we will be discussing cases to explain this. So first is in the case of Arnold versus Nazareno. So um, this involves si Arnold, <clears throat> a uh, land broker. Okay, he is an agent of uh, one of the uh, businessman, uh, businessman na nagbenta ng uh, lupa sa government. Ang halaga ng lupa na yon ay 20,000 pesos lang. 20,000 pesos lang ang halaga ng lupa na yon. Pero na ibenta sa government ng 1.5 million pesos, imagine mo yon. Worth 20,000 pesos lang yung lupa tapos na ibenta sa government ng 1.5 million pesos. Kaya common sense dictates that there is something irregularity that happened here. Okay? During that time, ay gumagawa ang ating uh, uh, Congress, ng, uh, gumagawa ng ating Senate in relation to, uh, gumagawa sila ng batas in relation to that. No? Kaya, of course, hindi tanga ang ating, uh, ang, uh, ang ating Senate. So, they invited Arnold for a hearing. And that is hearing in aid of legislation. Ang tanong nila kay Arnold ay, Magkano yung worth ng lupa? 20,000 pesos po. Uh, magkano mo na ibenta sa government? 1.5 million pesos. So, paano naging ganun? Pa paano ang 20,000 ay naging 1.5? Tapos sabi ni Arnold, eh kasi may sinuhulan ako ng 440,000 pesos. Okay? Sinuhulan ako na officer ng government. Ang tanong sa kanya ay, sino yun? Okay? Sino yung sinuhulan mo? Tapos sabi ni, ni Arnold, I invoke my right to remain silent. Ayaw kong sabihin kung sino. Pwede bang ipakulong si Arnold dahil ayaw niyang sabihin ang, ang uh, pangalan ng taong yun? To tell you, yes. Because that hearing is in aid of legislation. Okay? But take note naman, sa kaso ni Neri, Neri versus uh, Senate Committee. So, si Neri ay uh, Secretary ng NEDA, National Economic Development Authority, uh, under the uh, time of uh, President Arroyo, Arroyo. So, this involves yung uh, uh, in one of the in one of the uh, interviews ng mga media kay Neri, <clears throat> Sinabi niya na tinangka daw siya na suhulan ng Kamelec Chairman ng 200 million pesos in exchange sa uh, isang project. Okay? In exchange sa isang project. So, in-invite na ngayon si Neri sa Senate for him to have uh, uh, to clarify yung sinabi niya sa uh, media na yun. So, ang tanong sa kanya ay, totoo ba na may nagtangkang nagsuhol sa'yo ng 200 million pesos? Yes. Okay, ang sagot niya, yes. Sino ang nagtangkang magsuhol sa'yo? Tapos sabi ni Neri, yung chairman ng Kamelec. So, ang tanong kay Neri ay, alam ba ito ng president? So, sabi ni Neri, alam ni president kasi sinabi ko mismo sa kanya. Ang next question kay Neri ay, Ano na ngayon ang sabi ni President sa'yo? Sabi ni Neri, ang sabi ni President sa akin, huwag po daw tatanggapin yung suhol. 
what happened afterwards? O ano na ngayon ang uh, ginawa ni, Ar uh, ni President Arroyo? Finalo up ba niya ang project na yon? Tapos sabi ni Neri, ayaw ko nang sagutin yan. I invoke my right to remain silent. So, ano ang, ano ang what happened next? Ayaw na niyang sagutin yung tanong. So, pwede bang ipakulong si Neri dahil ayaw niyang sagutin ang mga tanong ng senators? to tell you no because that is only a hearing as appearance of department heads kaya inulit ko ah if that hearing is in aid of legislation pwedeng pilitin ang witness na sagutin ang tanong kung ayaw niyang sagutin pwede siyang ipak ipakulong ng congress but if it is only an appearance of department heads hindi pwedeng pilitin Okay? Ang witness na sagutin ang tanong. Let's go to De La Paz versus Senate Committee on Foreign Affairs. Si De La Paz ay isang opisyal ng PNP, Philippine National Police. So, kasama ang eight na officers ng PNP, pumunta sila sa Moscow. Kasi may Uh, di ko alam, basta kung may training o may seminar sila sa Moscow, basta pumunta sila sa Moscow. But si De La Paz, nahulian siya dahil sa kanyang lug luggage, may mga euros, may cash amounting to lahat-lahat uh, ay nagkaka-amount ng more or less uh, uh, more or less 9 to 10 million pesos. So, kinanfiscate yung euros so uh, they were temporarily detained so nalaman ng government ng Pilipinas yun na ang isang opisyal ng PNP ay tinangkan niyang magpuslit ng malaking amount from the Philippines going to Moscow kaya nagkaroon ng investigation ang depensa naman ni, ni De La Paz paano ako makapag cooperate sa investigation nyo, Senate Committee on Foreign Affairs. Eh, yan ay ginawa ko abroad. Hindi naman, hindi naman ginawa dito sa Pilipinas. So the issue is, pwede bang mag-conduct ng investigation ang Senate natin involving the irregularity conducted by a PNP officer abroad? O anong sabi ng Supreme Court? Yes, pwede. This is because the Senate could investigate all matters relating to the relations of the Philippines with all other nations. Kaya pwede lang i-investigate yun. Let's go to budget. Di ba sabi ko noon na the power of the purse, the power of uh, the wallet is in the legislative branch of the government. Kasi sila, yung legislative branch ng government natin, silang may hawak sa ating budget. Okay? So, budget is a financial program of the national government for a designated calendar year. Kaya, ang Congress natin, silang gumagawa ng budget. Kaya nang nag-alala si President Duterte, nung nagkaroon ng... Uh, Uh, problema sa speakership kasi baka mamaya pati yung budget natin ay maapektuhan at sana huwag naman no? the law is being originated ay, is, uh, the law originates from the congress so there must be a specific step by step procedure how may that bill become eventually a law so first step is a first is the uh, first reading so any member of either house may present a proposed bill signed by him for the first reading in reference to the proper committee Kasi may mga, kami, kami, may mga napakadaming committees sa, sa Congress natin. 
So if it involves education, there is a committee for education. So during the first reading, the principal author of the bill may propose the inclusion of additional authors thereof. Afterwards, may refer to appro appropriate committee. So immediately after the first reading, the bill is to be referred to the proper committee for the study or consideration. If this approved in the committee, it will die a natural death. So, but if it will be approved, then it will be submitting a report. Afterwards is second reading. If the committee reports uh, the bill favorably, the bill is forwarded to the committee on rules, so it may be calendared for a second reading. So in this stage, the bill is read in the second time in its entirety. So lahat-lahat ng laman ng batas na yon ay babasahin in its entirety. Unless if the reading will be dispensed by the majority vote. Kaya pwedeng sabihin ng uh, majority na senators na huwag nang, huwag nang basahin, sayang ang oras. Uh, pwedeng may dispense yung reading. Afterwards, debate will follow. So it will be the Senate or the House of Representatives who will decide if they are going to kill or if they are going to pass the bill. So after approval, uh, the bill will be printed in its uh, final form and um, yes, it will be printed in its uh, final form and it will be calendared for a third reading. So in the third reading, only the title of the bill will be read. Babasahin lang yung title ng bill. At kukunin na ang boto ng members ng uh, kung yan ay ginawa sa House of Representatives, kukunin ang boto ng mga congressman. If that is uh, done in the uh, Senate, the new mga senators. So majority of the vote will constitute quorum and it is sufficient to pass the bill. Kaya kung hindi niya nakuha ang majority vote, then it will be dying a natural death. So after the process was completed in one house, it refer na yan sa other house. Kaya kung ginawa yan sa uh, House of Representatives, Iri refer yan sa Senate. O kung ginawa yan sa Senate, iri refer yan sa House of Representatives. At uulitin nila yung process. Okay? Uulitin nila yung process. Paano kung may provision sa bill na hindi nagkaintindihan o hindi magmatch ang wisdom o provisions ng House of Representatives o Senate? So in that case, a joint bicameral committee will be created in order na tansahin yung disagreement na yun. So, kung okay na sa both House of Representatives and Senate, then the bill will now be submitted to the President. So, if it will be submitted to the President, three things may happen there. Okay? There may be three things that may happen there. First, the president will sign the bill. So, kung nag-sign, kung pinirbahan niya ang bill, automatic it will become a law. Second, the president may not sign the bill. Basta hayaan niya lang sa kanyang table doon. No? Uh, what will happen if the, the president will not sign that bill? Basta hayaan niya lang doon. After 30 days under the constitution, that bill will automatically become a law as if he had signed it. Third thing that may happen is the president may veto the bill. Ang ibig sabihin ng veto ay ibabalik niya, ayaw niya sa bill na yun, at ibabalik niya kung saan nag-originate. Hopeless na ba ang 
bill pag binalik kung saan siya nag-originate? No. Because at least two-thirds vote of the uh, chamber were in the law originated may override the veto power of the president. Ibig sabihin, kung nag-originate yan sa Senate, tapos binalik kang president, sabi ng uh, president ng Pilipinas, ayaw ko sa batas na yan. But at least 18 of the senators voted na ipasa ang batas na yun, that law will, ay, that bill will become a law. Okay, so what are the ways how the bill may become a law? First, if the president will sign it, then that bill will become a law. Second, walang ginawa ang president within 30 days. Okay, nakalagay lang sa kanyang table, then that bill will become a law. Third is, that bill was vetoed by the president. Sabi ng president, ayaw ko yan. No? So, bumalik sa house kung saan siya originate But, at least two-thirds of the house members or the senate members voted it for it to become a law. In that case, it will become, that bill will become a law. So, to cut the story short, there are two steps for approval we, uh, for the bill to become a law. There is approval by the Congress and approval by the President. So, generally, it is the law that will provide when it will become effective. Pero kung hindi nakalagay sa batas kung kailan siya maging effective, then it will be effective uh, 15 days following the completion of their publication in the official gazette. Let's go to taxation. So taxation is also a... Uh, it is a power that is lodged in the Congress. Okay, so imagine nyo kung gaano uh, uh, ka-powerful ang Congress, sila ang gumagawa ng batas. Sila ang in charge sa ating budget, sila pa ang in charge sa taxation. So taxation may be understood as a process and as a power. It is a power that is lodged to the uh, Congress. As a process, it is an act of laying tax to raise the income of the government to defray the expenses of the government. As a power, it refers to the inherent power of the uh, state. To uh, uh, It is the inherent power of the uh, uh, state to enforce, to demand, enforce contributions to support the government. So, may dalawang aspeto ng taxation. We have the act of levying or imposing the uh, tax, which is a legislative act. But yung actual collection, assessment, collection, at receipt ng tax, they are essentially administrative in character which is no longer a part of the function of the legislative branch of the government. Let's go to the case of uh, Commissioner of BIR versus Court of Appeals. So this involves the YMCA. Alam niyo bang YMCA? The uh, Young Men Christian Association. What happened there is, uh, yung YMCA, it is a, uh, a it is a private corporation, but it has a religious, educational, and charitable objective. Kaya it is not for income. It only happened that, meron siyang business. Totoo na siya ay charitable institution educational institution, pero mayroon siyang business. Nagpaparent siya ng uh, properties, tapos naniningil ng parking fee. 
So, uh, millions ang nakuha niya sa business na yun, no In renting and uh, parking fee. So, sabi ngayon ng BIR, YMCA, magbayad ka naman ng income tax kasi may income ka naman kahit papakano. Ang palusot naman ng YMCA, kami naman ay charitable institution. Okay? So, ang issue dito ay magbabayad ba ang uh, magbabayad ba ang YMCA ng income tax? According to the Supreme Court, yes. Ikaw, YMCA, dahil charitable institution ka, exempted ka sa property tax. Pero dahil nagkaroon ka ng income, abay, dapat magbayad ka ng income tax. No? So, if there is a charitable institution, he is exempted from property tax but not income tax. Okay, that is a case of Commissioner of BIR versus Court of Appeals. Okay, thank you. So, tapos na tayo sa part 3. You are given sufficient time in order to view this discussion, understand this discussion, and we will be scheduling another explanation and uh, recitation for this purpose. Okay, so that's it. God bless.